just popping in here, guys. It's what I was talking about on my Instagram. This is the video that I didn't want to throw out just because of one little thing, but my lights have been blinding me because I'm compensating for this window over here. And so you will see on one side of my face that I just don't blend my foundation. I just don't blend it. So I hope it's not too distracting. It has nothing to do with the performance of the Vesca products. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being awesome. Uh, on with the show. <laughs> What is up guys, welcome back. So today is Vesca part two. If you aren't up on my stories, go follow me on Instagram at heykaki. We're almost at 10,000, please do it. But I posted on my Instagram that I had reviewed Vesca and Vesca watched my video, the brand watched my video, and they basically followed up and offered to send me all the things that I said that I had like wished I had gotten in that video as well as a bunch of other stuff. And so I have, pretty much everything in their collection that is like pertinent to my skin tone in front of me at the moment, you know, in addition to the stuff that I had before. So I'm gonna be doing a full face of Vesca Beauty today with a bunch of new stuff that you didn't see last time. I'm going to swatch a whole bunch of stuff. I've got all of the eyeshadows now. I have all of the liquid lip balms now and I'm going to be showing you guys swatches of all those. I think I'm actually gonna put all of the lip balms on and like wipe them off and just show them to you guys so you can see kind of like what would work for you and stuff. So can you tell how excited I am to film this? I'm like really pumped to film this. I'm discombobulated because I'm actually super pumped to try all this stuff. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I've got all three of the primers here. Let's go ahead. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! These are neat! Ooh! They're like pastel, shimmery primers. Look at that. There's a lavender one, a kind of gold one, and a kind of pink one. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I don't know which direction to go. Hmm, am I like backing away from a challenge if I don't do that blue? Let's go with the blue and see what happens. So that one is called, I think that one's called Dawn. Yeah, and it's lavender. Let's do this. Stonks. Mm. This feels great. It's thin, it's lightweight, but it's nourishing. It feels like, it feels like, it feels kind of cooling like water on your skin. Mmm, and I'm not getting some kind of like super obvious, you know, space age blue iridescence. I'm just getting like a nice, a nice bounciness. I don't know whether each color would make a really distinct difference, but I'm glad they all exist because it's a lot of fun. The foundation I'm going to be using today, since they don't have a foundation or any complexion products yet, like, you know, foundation, concealer, powder, or anything, is my new Favy Fave that I don't know whether to do like a full review on or not, but it is the Bare Minerals Liquid Mineral Foundation I got in the shade Golden Fair 04, and I have been loving this so much lately. And I'm just going to use this selectively. We're not gonna get like full, full coverage here, but I'm, suddenly I'm like breaking out right here on both sides. Like what's that about? I'm just kind of using this as a little bit of a blendy base and we might go in with a little bit of concealer as well. But we are going to powder because these are powder products. I'm going to be uh, swatching the bronzers for you guys. I have, which ones? Rio and Santorini. And Santorini would be, I think, the new one to me because Rio was, yes, Rio was the one that was a little bit, it's very, very fair, but it's a little bit olive, which is very cool. Cool meaning interesting because that's actually a pretty hard color way to find. And I did see some people who were excited to hear that comparison in my comments because they said, wow, I am a fair skinned olive undertoned person and I can never find a bronzer. So that was really, really cool. Okay, I am going to touch with, okay, bye. Um, the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I loved the original camo concealer. No one else did, but uh, I just decided to pick this up in kind of a drugstore haul that I did. And I'm not really sure that that's gonna be light enough, but we'll see. So yeah, Vesca is, I, they first caught my eye because they put out this really, really inclusive range of bronzers. It goes all the way from like, you know, fair olive to like this really deep kind of burgundy undertone bronzer for uh, very, very deep, rich skin tones. 
And I was like, okay, this is the first brand that I've seen that like that's what they introduced first thing out of the gate. And that was why I was interested in them. And so I decided to just kind of buy, you know, the first few things that interested me from their collection. And to spoil the other video, the eyeshadows ended up being the stars of the show. They're very, very, very cool, like super unique and very easy to use. And the lip is like this liquid lip balm that has become so popular as a formula for very good reason. And uh, now I have all of the shades. This lighting is really good. I'm liking how it's turning out in the videos, but I am having a little more trouble seeing what I'm doing because the lights are so bright. But I think that that looks pretty good. Okie dokie, let's do a little bit of Poudre here. I'm going in with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. She's an accessible queen. So let's swatch these two bronzers here. I am not going to put Rio on this time because we know how it went last time and it was just kind of green, like I said, on me. And that has everything to do with whether or not something agrees with your undertones. I think bronzer is particularly challenging because you're trying to mimic something that your skin does, how your skin looks in the sun, and you're also kind of working with but also against your undertones. It's a tricky product to nail down, especially just person to person to person, not even taking into consideration the struggle from a brand standpoint to try and put out a range of them. So these are the fairest two shades in their range. So that is Rio and that is Santorini. We're going to go with Santorini today. And the lightest shade in their range was still just a little bit deeper than the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer that I use. So for context, but a, this does have a slight fragrance. It smells like um, coconut, a little bit like coconut. And um, the formula is the most finely milled velvety thing. It is so easy to apply because it's like incredibly lightweight. It doesn't want to grab and grabbing is a bad thing. You know what I mean? So I can apply this very much where all of the sun would hit me. So, you know, back when I was a teenager, my God, when I first discovered bronzer, Lord help us, Lord help us. I was a teenager, what, in like the early 2000s. I turned 13 in the year 2000. And um, we went to the drugstore and, you know, just bought whatever Sarah Michelle Gellar was, you know, telling us to buy from Maybelline. You know, whatever bronzer was on the market, it didn't matter what shade it was. I was just like, because I just wanted to be tan. I lived in Florida. Everybody else seemed to have a tan and I just couldn't get one. So I fake tanned. I put on bronzer that probably didn't match me, but I do remember the old days. Of. I mean, I think Jamie French did that in her like early 2000s makeup beauty guru video where she was just like bronzer everywhere, nothing on the eyebrows. Like that was the vibe. <laughs> oh, that is a much more native looking uh, glow on me. And that's surprising to me because typically when I would pick out a bronzer from any range, I would think that I would probably be the lightest in their range, but that just speaks to the exhaustiveness of this range is that there is a shade that is even lighter and a different skin uh, undertone even than me. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm usually the fairest of them all if they even have one for me. Like Kosas doesn't even have one for me. Ilya doesn't even have one for me. They're all a little too orange. So I love that this is not super orange. It's actually really incredible. It's beautiful. I kind of want to put more on, <laughs> but I'm going to hold off. We're going to go for blush. What blush do I want to use? I'm going to go in with, where is she? Yeah, I'm going to go in with the Wayne Goss. I've been really enjoying the Coral Rose. After I finally just got over myself and figured out that like, no, not all of them are something that I can make work for me. I figured out that I probably should have just bought Coral Rose and that been it because this works so nicely on my skin tone. It is such a good formula. I like it very much like, and I think that the highlighter is really pretty too, but we're going to be using the Vesca highlighter today. So we're just getting set up in the new house. And I think my husband is testing out the guest room as his office. And I so if you hear like a low grumble, I will not know until I'm editing this, whether the microphone microphone is picking it up. That is what you hear is my husband having Zoom calls for work. Oh, I feel so pink and cute. Yeah. So Wayne did a really, really good job uh, of making this line really inclusive, which is why the other shades don't really work for me as well, you know, because they weren't supposed to. So now we are bronzed. We are blushed. Let's talk about some highlighters because they did send me the next highlighter. So I bought Moonlight, which is this one. And they sent me 
Wish, which is, ooh, they're similar, but like one's gold and one's peach. So let's swatch those. They are really pretty. They have a very good iridescence to them that's also slightly blurring. Yeah, so Moonlight and Wish, and Wish is gonna be peach -er, and I'm going to try that one today. I'm in a funny mood. We've had so many people like in and out of our house lately because of all of the work that we need to get done to make this house what we want it to be. And it's still going to be like literally years before it's what we want it to be. It's kind of a, gonna be like an ongoing project kind of thing. Ooh, wait, that's so nice. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Discovering the power of peach on me. Do I have peach undertones? Am I like learning new things about myself? I don't know, but that is so nice. Ooh, 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 yes. But yeah, we've had so many people in and out of the house that I get more like social interaction. Plus my mother-in-law is here helping us with the baby. And so like I get so much more social stimulation before I sit down to film than I usually do. And so I feel like I'm a little bit more with it. I'm like, yay, sentences, oh my gosh. Without having to like struggle bus all the way through the first half of the video. All right, so as far as the eyes are concerned, I'm pretty sure they only have four shades and I shouldn't say only, but four are the ones that I can find in my collection right now. And I already had the kind of like pink one and the deep sort of purple one. And those are the ones that I fell absolutely head over heels madly in love with in my last video. So that's those two. They are super, super beautiful. The name of those, uh, that's Lyra or Lyra and uh, Vela. Lara Vela. And then what they sent me was Karina and Orion. So beautiful, kind of like the same, I don't know, the same concept between the two. Like I feel like they pair really beautifully together because it's like a brown and a gold. And I talked about this before, but you know, there is something to be said for the the nuances that are captured in the colorways in this collection. Because, you know, I said that that was brown. It's definitely more of like a deep olive leaning towards brown kind of, but it's, it shifts gold and I feel like it goes with the gold really, really beautifully for that reason. And that gold also has a really nice kind of patina thing to it. So they all just complement each other really well. There, you know, gold does not necessarily always mean gold. Sometimes it's really yellow gold. Sometimes it's really green gold. Sometimes it's really like champagne -y gold. And this is like a really good, true, like neutral to patina gold, which I, I prefer to wear. I like it very much on brown eyes. So the way that I applied these the last time, and I think that that's what we're gonna do is just you know, use these two that, uh, that they gave me this time is that I went with my fingers, which is not something I typically, you know, warm up to. Oh boy. Mm. And that was the exact reaction that I had the last time that I applied, I believe v v Lyra. Yeah. It's just like, oh my God, how am I able to achieve this gorgeous foiled metallic thing in like one step like that? It's just wild. It's wild and I didn't really mean to do that, but it picks up the shades in this beige sweater so well. It's more of a camel. What is that, like a light tan? I don't know. Ugh, ugh, and it's so easy to control. Plus it's got just enough warmth. Remember when we were talking about in the um, Auric Beauty video, Auric Cosmetics video, I was talking about how Ego, the deep, charcoal -y silver. It's cool toned and so it's going to make my eyelids look smaller as soon as I put them on, put it on my eyelids because cool things recede from the eye. This has enough warmth to it that look, all of a sudden my eye looks bigger. Even though that's not a flattering shape and it's only on my lid and we haven't done any kind of like, you know, illusion building yet, still looks like my eyelid is coming towards you now. Color theory, love it. So this is Karina that I'm working with right now. We're gonna do that on the other eye. And the thing that I really like about this formula is that it builds on itself and everything and then you can actually move it around after it dries a little bit as you need to with a brush because it dries down to just like a prestige quality powder finish. And it will wear a long time. It doesn't necessarily keep that like perfect wet metallic thing. Um, I mean, I don't really know anything that would, but it, um, it does still stay really like satisfying. 
All right, we are just going to use that in like windshield wiper motions to blend. It's so pretty. And you know, you have like a liquid glitter, which is basically what this is, or like a liquid foil eyeshadow. And you don't necessarily think, oh, I'm gonna put that on and go to work. I mean, a lot of people aren't like going to work, but anyway, like being on Zoom calls or anything, so a lot of people are going to work. Regardless, you don't necessarily think of this as like, oh, I'm gonna throw on a, like a gold foil liquid eyeshadow for daytime, but I would argue you could absolutely get away with it. This is, you know, everyday fancy, everyday festive, and it's so easy to use. Like, screw that brush. <sighs> I don't need the brush. Okay, I'm going to take that little brush from Rare Beauty and go underneath my eyes with that gold. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Gloria from Thrive, the pressed eyeshadow that I really like because you can just wear it as just one, one and done gold eye look. But I actually think this goes even better with brown eyes than that one does because that one is still even a little bit warmer than this. Ooh, mm. yep. That's gorgy. Gorgy, gorgy, gorgy. Oh, I look like I know what I'm doing. Yep, I, I just, I obsessed over this formula the last time and I'm just gonna keep obsessing over it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of Orion, the kind of cool toned olivey color, and I'm gonna go on like a fatter brush here and work that into my crease just a little. Get some drama going, you know? And I honestly, I just feel like, I feel like the fingers are, are just better in this case. The brush is fine, but I feel like you don't need as much product as that brush wants to pick up. And you can just control it so much better with your fingers, which if you're new to my channel, that's never something I say. It's basically the same look that I achieved with the pink and the purple before. So, I mean, again, they just complement each other really well. Mmm. Mmm. What? That is, oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm just like having deja vu. It's good to know that the formula translates across all of the shades. Okay, at least we discovered that. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep obsessing about this color combo too. <laughs> Interesting, the peach doesn't necessarily translate quite as well for an inner corner as the other one does. So I'm actually going to pull out Moonlight, the original one, because it's just a little bit lighter, a little bit pearlier, and I think it'll actually show up more on my inner corners because the, what did they call this one? Wish shade is so close to my skin tone that it doesn't actually like highlight on my inner corner, but that's also why it works so well as like a texture on my skin without adding a lot of pigment. Ooh, gosh, that's that's just so nice, okay? And what I can do actually, since these are like dried down on the back of my hand, is I can still pick that up, oddly enough, and use it to smoke out my lower lash line because it's just so little product. That's always something that I have trouble with with other like liquid eyeshadows or cream eyeshadows is it's hard to pick up very, very little. And you end up wasting so much of it because once it's dried down, you can't do anything with it. And so you kind of like try and put it down on a palette or on the back of your hand or something. And then you're just trying to get the tiniest, tiniest amount. And then by the time you go to dip back into it, it's done. Like it's already completely set down. And um, this, you can still work with it once it sets down, which is lovely. Anyway, I'm going to put all of my finishing touches on my eyes. I'll be right back with you and we will talk about lips and we will do a whole bunch of swatches. Okay, so. <laughs> You know how when you're putting your makeup on and like every single step just makes you happier? <laughs> like that's how I was, I was putting my eyeliner on and I was like, yeah. And then I put on my mascara and I was like, yeah. And I put on my brows and I was like, yeah. Like this is just, it's, uh, I feel really pretty. This eye is just, mm, it's making me just as happy as the last one and I, it's, I'm over the moon. So um, let's go ahead, the thing that I said that I was going to do before I forget because I always end up closing the video out before I do it. That is the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray from Charlotte Tilbury, and it will stop being so shiny pretty quickly. And we're going to go ahead and swatch all of the lip colors here from Vesca. All right, so I wanted you guys to see them all together because Ginger Lily and Lotus are like remarkably similar. So this is Morning Glory Dahlia Orchid 
Lotus, Ginger Lily, and then this one is called Hibiscus. And Hibiscus is more of an orange red. So yeah, Orchid is like a hot pink and uh, the Dahlia one is like a blue red. And then Morning Glory is like this deep brown. All right, we're gonna do this. We're going to start with the lightest, which is Ginger Lily, which is kind of my new favey fave. And that's gonna be this one. If you're unfamiliar, with this formula, it is just like that really lovely, bouncy, super glossy liquid lip balm thing. This one's my favorite. I wanna wear it with my lip liner, but um, I wanna show them to you guys without it. It gives you all the bounce and all of the nourishment without any stickiness. And it's just, it's just lovely. And your lips are better for it. So, absolutely gorgeous. Ginger Lily would probably almost look clear on a lot of people, um, but for me, it's just kind of a really, really fair rose. Okay, next is Lotus, and that is the one that I bought initially, and there was a lot of confusion on my channel, I think because of the way that I had edited the colors. Again, I'm not like a super expert at this stuff. I always try and make it look as like true to life as I can, but a lot of people said it looked really orange on camera. So here it is in different lighting, my new setup. And while they are similar, in color profile when you're swatching them, this one is a lot more pigmented. And that is the one thing that I found between all of these formulas, all these formulas, all of these shades is that the pigmentation is slightly different for each of the shades. So this one is going to be more pigmented than Ginger Lily. Ginger Lily is very, very sheer. This one is like medium sheer. And some of these are uh, very uh, intensely pigmented. So that's Lotus. That's the one that I had in my first video. And again, these two are easily like my favorites because they're the easiest to wear for me. You know, lip gloss, I kind of want to put on mindlessly, but I could definitely see a market for the rest of them as well. All right, next I'm going to go in with Orchid. Orchid is this really vibrant hot pink. A little harder to put on because it is much more pigmented. And the pigment is a little inconsistent on this one. You know, it's like because the formula wants to wear so lightly, it can look a little patchy when you put the actual color on because you can't really build it to full saturation and it's hard to get it to like an even saturation. You see what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not putting forth the most effort, but it is at the end of the day, a liquid lip balm. Like it's not something that I would, you know, want to put on with a brush or something. And you just, you end up with it being kind of patchy when you wanna when you wanna get the full saturation. It's just hard to it's hard to nail down. So not bad, but not for me. Okay, next I'm going to show you hibiscus, which is uh, kind of a coral. It's a very much a state of cape shade. It's honestly like pretty orange and kind of awesomely so. And as you can see, you know, this is very coral orange, almost pink in the tube, um, but it all matters like what color your lips are, <laughs> how it actually like comes off because it's gonna be so translucent. It's how it mixes with your lips natural color. And so it's gonna like patchier on me because this is so dissonant to my natural lip color. A very, very pretty color though. It's like almost peach on me, like a really, really vibrant peach. But um, again, it's hard to get a consistent coat of it because my lips are almost like blue purple in comparison to it. And so everywhere that it shows through, it's very obvious. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just my eye is trained for that, that kind of thing, you know? Next we have Dahlia and this is the blue red. And warning, everything turns pink on me, everything. Do you see that? It's a blue red for sure, but everything tries to turn pink on my skin because of my undertones, especially the blue in my lips. And again, it works but the high pigmentation, the high saturation on this makes it so that it doesn't really agree with me specifically. 
but I could see if, you know, it was closer to your natural skin tone or if your lips were just darker, <laughs> that it would make a really, really beautiful coat on your lips. And it is more consistent than I feel like is uh, like Orchid was. Orchid was probably the most inconsistent, the hardest one to control. This one I could absolutely get away with, but it does steal the show, doesn't it? It's like, you know, you thought that I had like bright gold on my eyes and then you see my lips and it's like, oh, okay, where did, where did her eyes go? <laughs> okay, and go ahead and prepare yourselves for Morning Glory because this is a shade that just isn't meant for me. It is a deep brown for people who look good in deep brown. And it just, it just doesn't work that well on me. <sighs> Every time I say that about a shade, inevitably a handful of people in the comments are like, I think that that worked, you know? But again, it just makes me acutely aware of the blue in my lips, like the undertone of blue. And so when that blue mixes with that brown, it's kind of a like not healthy color. It's kind of like a blue um, mauve taupe kind of thing on me. And like, it's okay. And I think that if it were like a lipstick that were that color, I might be able, I don't know if it had more opacity, but the way that it mixes with my natural lip color, it just ain't it on me. But the formula is absolutely gorgeous and the pigment is very consistent on this one. The longer I look at it, the more my eyes start to adjust to it. Fair, fair, fine, we can do better. So I'm going to go in with my Yagi Lip Liner, like we always do. And I'm going to go in with Ginger Lily because I did not use that one last time in the last video. I used Lotus. It will complete the look. Yeah, Ginger Lily is my f my favorite. It's just so cool toned. It's so nice. And the formula, if I haven't boasted on this enough, I cannot emphasize enough how luxurious and lovely that is. Mm, nom nom nom. It's just... Mm. Feels fantastic. Who wants more blush? I do. Going in with the same blush. Usually I am one to um, layer different shades, but I don't know what it is about this Wayne Goss one. It's just like the more you put on, the better it looks. Ooh, girl. Nobody is paying me to say this. Yes, they sent me these products, but you know, I'm perfectly honest about the results on any of these things. And I just think that all of this just happened to nail it today. I think that the bronzer was the right color. By the way, we're doing final thoughts now. The bronzer in Santorini was the right color for me. You know, the Rio shade is gonna be great on a lot of people, but this is this this was the one. Um, starting at the beginning, out of order here, the primer. I don't really know if it made much of a difference, but like, I, you know, like shade to shade to shade, but it felt really good. And my skin can use all of that like nice, wet, cooling bounciness it can get right now, being that it's like crazy dry and cold outside. Um, my skin was very happy for that, but I'm not really sure like if you would notice the difference between like the blue or the peach or the or the gold kind of thing. Um, I, in other words, I don't think you could go wrong, but I, you probably don't need all of them. Um, the highlighter in that peach shade Wish, I didn't know that I could improve on Moonlight, but I did. But I also found a way to put Moonlight in with my eye look, so I think they both serve a very good purpose for me. The eyes, I mean, come on guys. Look at, look at, look at that freaking eye. I can't, it's just, I'm, I'm salivating. Like I actually really don't know whether I prefer this combo or this combo. And they don't necessarily come as a duo, I don't know, maybe they do, um, but online they just sort of seemed naturally paired to one another for me, but like, they're perfect. Like this little combo, this little combo, I genuinely don't know which one I like better. It just matters what mood I'm in or what outfit I'm wearing, but like, so easy. It literally is easier to put on with your fingers than with a brush. So for all the people who like to use fingers, this is really it. Like, where is Amanda Z right now? <laughs> she would really like these if she hasn't tried them already. And um, the, the lip, I mean, I'm really glad I got to swatch them all for you. 
special, special, special thanks to the brand for sending me all of the lips so that I could show them all to you. And I hope that even though some of them look better on me than others, you can look at them and decide from an opacity standpoint, from a shade standpoint, from like the nuances between them and things that, uh, you know, which one is going to work best for you. Um, and I just, I really can't speak highly enough for this bouncy, nourishing, lovely, glossy, just healthy looking formula. So, I mean, we ended up with a really, really pretty face of makeup today, didn't we? I This is how I felt the last time I got done, putting on the, the first uh, full face of Vesca that I bought. There is just something to be said for makeup that is fun and easy to use, and this is makeup that is fun and easy to use, guys. And you know that I would only say it if it were true. That was a lot of fun, and I'm really stoked about the look that I achieved, so there you go. Thank you to Vesca. If you have any additional questions about this stuff, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to try and, you know, help you guys decide or whatever, you know, between this, between... I also swatched this formula against all the other liquid lip balm formulas in my Rare Beauty video that I just put out. So if you haven't watched that, at least go watch that part of it. Very valuable. But like Rowan, Vesca, Fit Glow, um... Rare Beauty and um, you could argue the Ilia uh, Balmy Gloss are very, very similar in formula. And so uh, it's all kind of about, you know, the shade that you would want, but you get a whole lot of product for your money here. Oh, by the way, yes, I wanted to go ahead and tell you guys the prices on these real quick if this is the first of the Vesca videos that you are watching. The Lush Glow Creamy Lip Oil is $26. The uh, bronzer, the Kissed by Bronzer is $30. The Stargaze Luminous Glow Highlighter is $28. The Soft Skin, sorry, Soft Sun Radiant Skin, it's a tongue twister, Primer is $30. And the eyes are $28 and then they've got little sets. They've got like little duos and little value sets that you can go and shop from time to time too. And I think they gave me a 10% off. So I will put that on the screen as well as down below and you can shop that. I don't make any money off of that. It's just kind of an exclusive discount for my channel. So enjoy. And I really hope you guys can feel the positive energy coming through this video because man, I like this face of makeup. Like wanna wake up tomorrow and put it on again. So yeah, guys, if you did enjoy this video, found it valuable, just enjoyed passing the time with me, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. Follow me on Instagram. There is a link down below. Please follow me on Instagram. We have a lot of fun in my stories and I'm very close to 10,000. So come on over. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.